Good afternoon, Colorado. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of What's for Lunch. I'm your host, Larry Hers, and today I got something to warm you up inside. I got the Bud Long and my friend Jared here. Welcome, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. So give us a little history of you first and then the Bud Long. Because I don't know your history. Okay, my food's much more interesting, but... Uh, <laughs> Where know, are you from? So I'm from Chicago, okay. born and raised. I lived there most of my life. Came out here to Colorado three years ago. Came to, out, to open up a restaurant? To or? open up a restaurant in Rhino at the Zeppelin Station Food Hall. It was called Ofu. It's no longer there. And uh, it was a temporary move. And three years later, here we are. Still here. Me and my wife and two kids live up in Evergreen. And we've opened three restaurants down here now. I'm working on a restaurant up in Evergreen. We still have the five Budlong stores back in Chicago. And So let's go back to Chicago then. Yeah, yeah. So when did you open the first Budlong? Budlong was 2015. Was there a restaurant before Budlong? Yep. Uh, it's called Rub's Backcountry Smokehouse. So that was my original entry into restaurant ownership. Is that still there? It's uh, No, we closed barbecue okay. and moved it out here. We have AJ's Pit Barbecue okay. being on the show tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, barbecue, it, it, we cook with all wood. It's a very artisanal thing for me. It's a, it's a passion project for me. So when I moved out here to decide we were going to stay here, I brought my smokers from Chicago out here, okay. closed the original store, and uh, moved in to AJ's. So. Okay, so Bud Long, where did the concept come from? Where, so how do you Bud know how Long, to do this? Yeah, so I was down in Nashville at a barbecue okay. conference. You know, every industry <laughs> has conferences, right? Yeah. Barbecue yeah. is not uh, unique. We, we, we have conferences also. So uh, usually it's in Austin or Nashville or somewhere in the South. It's all Southern Makes food. Sense. So I was down in Nashville in 2014 at a barbecue conference, the NBBQA conference, and I went to Prince's Hot Chicken, and I had hot chicken for the first time, and I was just blown away. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a lover of all things Southern comfort food. I grew up in Chicago, but my grandparents had a farm in Kentucky, and I just I, we grew up pickling and canning and making our own applesauce and tomato peach sauce, and we had a garden, and we did all that stuff because we were poor, <laughs> not because we were hipsters, you know? Uh, it was just how I grew up, so I, I, I was, I guess, a Southern heart in my soul and, and, and was raised in the North, but down in Nashville, I had this fried chicken at Prince's and said, I gotta bring this back to Chicago. We were already developing a fried chicken concept for restaurant number two. Okay. And so I said, I'm going to make it hot chicken. And the original store is in Lincoln Square, neighborhood of Chicago, where the Budlong Farm used to be. So that's I was where wondering the, where the name came from. Yeah. So, so that's, there used to be a farm there. Yeah. yeah. That was a, in, in Lake Michigan, Chicago's on the shores of Lake Michigan. Yeah. And the soil or in, the, in the area is very sandy because the, the, the shoreline used to come far further inland than it does now. You can't grow much in sandy soil except sure. for root vegetables. So the okay. Budlongs grew cucumbers and beets, and then they sold them, and they had a brand called the Budlong Pickle Company. Well, all good Nashville hot chicken comes with pickles on top, and most restaurants in Nashville just have buckets of pickles they buy. I said, we're going to be different. We're going to make our own pickles. So uh, it was the geographic location of the original store being on the farmland that was once growing cucumbers and the origin of the Budlong Pickle Company. That's a good story. I'm glad, I'm glad. Yeah, so... <laughs> So that's it. it kind of, and originally it was called the Budlong Pickle and Chicken Diner. <laughs> that's a little long. It's a little long, and it was going to be a one-off concept. It was down the road from my uh -huh. barbecue place, and we were going to have. I like things all, all things Americana, vintage. You know, I was going to have bar stools and uh, pickled vegetables and fried chicken and biscuits and kind of a breakfast and lunch diner, and it turned into a fast casual concept that it grew some legs, and we opened up a few more stores. And were you the first Nashville hot chicken in Chicago? Absolutely, yeah. I thought so. You know, people had it on their menu, and that was a, it was right when it was getting hot. And I spent about a year and a half doing R and D frying chicken. So first, we had to figure out the best way to make fried chicken. You know, there's wet brine, dry brine, dry dredge, wet slurry, all and, kinds of different. And processes. how do you do it? So I, we do a dry brine, salt and pepper, okay. that brings out the natural juiciness of the chicken without adding uh, other liquid to it. You know, we don't want to add a bunch of saline solution to the bird. So we're just doing a dry brine, salt and pepper. Okay. From there, it gets a wet slurry, and that's a combination of dry ingredients, one of which is baking powder. So it makes almost like a tempura batter. Okay. It makes it really crispy. And then after the dip in the wet slurry, it goes into a dry dredge, which is flour and other seasonings and spices. So wet brine... Or, Dry brine, wet slurry, dry dredge, sit overnight to the next day. Oh, okay. So that sitting point is really important because if you batter chicken and fry it right away, oh, right the, the breading comes off, right? Sure. So we say overnight, that's how our prep process goes. It's really like four or five hours. Uh, you know, it makes a really crispy, that's like the signature to our fried chicken, aside from it being hot, is that it's really crispy and crunchy, and that's just well, the What's the difference between fried chicken that the Colonel would make and Nashville hot chicken? 
So Nashville hot chicken is spicy. You know, the breading, there's differences, but really any fried chicken can be hot chicken when chili oil is applied to it. So that's the key is chili oil. Yeah, so the original, uh, Thornton Prince, actually, do you know the story? I don't. So Thornton Prince was uh, a man about town, if you, if you will, down in Nashville, and he liked to go out, he liked the ladies, and he was out partying one night and came home and asked his then girlfriend to make him fried chicken for breakfast. Okay. After he was out all night, not with her, of course. <laughs> So the, it, was a, it was a dish of revenge, served hot. So she made him fried chicken, and she took some peppers from her garden and spiced up the oil and applied some of the oil to the chicken after she fried it. And her intention was to cause some intestinal discomfort <laughs> to, to Mr. Thornton Prince, and it totally backfired on her. And Do, do we know her name? Oh, you that know, would be I'll, something. I'll so she's the one who head, invented no. Nashville hot chicken. Yeah, and at the time it wasn't hot chicken, though, because hot chicken wasn't a thing. It was yeah. just the way she made fried yeah, chicken. Yeah. So then him and his brother opened up a place. It wasn't called Princess Hot Chicken originally. It was called, like, the Nashville Chicken Diner or something. What year do you think this is? This is back this is 75 years ago. Okay. Yeah, this is, like, in the 40s. So him and his brother opened up the original store. It was still there until last year. It burned down. In a strip mall, divey little place, and they started serving this style of chicken that became regionally known eventually as Prince's Hot Chicken, to which then, probably only in the last 10 years or 15 years, other chefs from other regions would go down to Nashville and other restaurants were, were putting this on their menu. So like Arnold's Meat and Three is a popular southern restaurant in Nashville. The son of the founder of that opened up a place called Hattie B's. Hattie B's, I know. Hattie B's is like the in and out of hot chicken. I won't say McDonald's, but it's like a, it's franchised now yeah. and they have several stores and they, they took hot chicken and they made it a good business. See, Prince's was always charming, but their service is slow. Their dining room was not elegant. Uh, you had to buy pop from the machine. I mean, 75 years, that's how it always sure. was. They never changed their processes. It took you an hour to get your food. There was a line every day. There was kind of a, there was, there, there, there's something to that though, you know, like having that line in the original store and all of that. But then I always say Hattie B's made hot chicken, put it on the national radar, but the inventor was Prince, Thornton Prince and his, and his brother and his girlfriend. Let's get back to the Bud Long. Yeah. So where's your location now? So we're at 81 South Pennsylvania. We're right next to Uncle Ramen. You know who you're across from, right? Uh, Carmine's on Penn and The Spot. Do you know who invented Carmine's on Penn? No. That was nope. my first restaurant. No kidding. Should you not? So our manager, director of operations, Andy Montgomery, uh, her cousin owned it at one point. So I opened in 1994, and then now it's on the fourth owner. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah, small world. <laughs> uh, let's talk about what you brought me for lunch Yeah, today. yeah, absolutely. So... When I started, so Nashville hot chicken is traditionally bone-in fried chicken, leg and thigh quarter or breast and wing quarter. When we opened our first store, that's all we sold, bone-in fried chicken. Well, now our most popular items by request are the sandwiches and the tenders because yep. people want something clean and easy to eat. Yep. When I order fried chicken, I still get the bone-in yeah, quarter it's juicier. It's that's what I like. I like bone-in meat. But we sell 300 sandwiches on a Saturday, and I sell seven or eight pieces of bone-in fried chicken. Okay. So. okay, so this is the tenders. Those are the tenders, three pieces on buttered Texas toast, house-made pickles. You know, we do everything a little bit different than a typical Nashville hot chicken restaurant would, where we're using Texas toast, not cheap white bread. Typically, you get a couple of pieces of cheap white bread, we toast the toast, and we butter it. So uh, our chicken, when it sits on there, the seasoning from the chicken and then the seasoning from the paste that we apply to the top of it soaks into the bread, and the bread at the end is a treat as well. Nice. House-made pickles on top. Those are like a bread and butter pickle, but a little bit different. Uh, we shock them on ice, so they're really crispy on the outside. They're not mushy like a lot of bread and butter pickles are. Let me are. just see how they are. I could hear it crunch. Mm -hmm. Not mushy, right? No, that's a damn good pickle. So we ice those those cucumbers. We hand caught them, uh, Ooh, ice them overnight. Good zest. Yeah, and then, and then mm. you know everything's from scratch, uh, from okay. our sauces to our sides, uh, our collard greens we make with a smoked beef short rib in them. That's different than traditional Southern style that would use a, a pork ham hock. We bring in that smoked beef rib from AJ's. So the smoky flavor, you can probably smell it from here. That beef it's, rib at AJ's intense. is insane. And that's, it's in there. You can see pieces of the meat in there. So uh, Now I'm going to have to have this. Collard greens. Let me pass you a fork. I haven't used that one. Well, not really. Generally don't eat on the show, but oh, I'm going Oh, sorry. I thought now. you... No, I thought that was a request, but... Well, let's keep let's going. Let's go to the end. Yeah. yeah. So then our sandwich. Our sandwich, our most popular item... It says a seven ounce skin on breast. So having the skin on the breast keeps it nice and crispy and a little fatty without going to the thigh meat. I love thigh meat. People who like to eat chicken sandwiches typically like white meat is what we found through our R&D. They do. But we like the skin on the, on the white meat so it still is gonna add a little bit of fat because you have that little bit of chicken fat between the chicken skin and the breast. So seven ounce skin on breast, so it's a big piece of meat. 
We do that same dry brine, wet slurry, dry dredge process. The coleslaw on there is house made, shredded vegetables, shredded cabbage, shredded carrots, onions, house made coleslaw dressing, everything from scratch. We don't buy any vegetables in a bag. So it's all right. farm to table cooking. And I don't know what this is. Uh, you know, those look a little interesting today. Those are our buttermilk biscuits. So today they kind of look like a uh, pastry, don't they? Yes, I thought they, it was a pastry. Yeah, they've got our house made jam in the center there. So we, do, we, we press a spoon into the center of that biscuit and put our salt and pepper butter. We make a compound butter in house that we put inside that biscuit. Those biscuits are also very extensive in R&D and, and execution. We use a uh, soft winter wheat called white lily, flour, soft winter wheat flour called white lily, which anybody in the South that makes biscuits uses this, this kind of flour, but you don't see it North very much. Uh, we use Pluger butter, which is a high slow churn, high fat European fat That's butter. Expensive super expensive. Butter. Yes, one hundred and forty five dollars a case. <laughs> Jesus. So, and we laminate the dough a little bit so they're flaky. So we roll out the biscuit dough, fold it into thirds, flip it over, roll it into thirds again. Uh, let's tell them uh, your hours. So we're open from eleven to nine. Right now it's Tuesday to Thursday, but within a couple of weeks we'll be open seven days a week. We just right now being our first month in that location, we were closed on Mondays to kind of get our heads in order. And then obviously takeout. Yep. Are you doing delivery? Takeout and delivery. Party. So you can download our app. We have our own personal app. And one of the things that we do during this pandemic is we really try to optimize the user experience to the extent that we can, given that you can't sit in our restaurant. Okay. So you can order from our Budlong app. You don't have to go to like our website. You can, but you don't have to go to our website and go through some shopping cart and PayPal somebody okay. from another state and feel weird about the process. It's, it's seamless. Download the Budlong app. Give Apple them your Store website. Or Android. Uh, Thebudlong.com. And yeah, get, you order from our website, order from our app, come see us at the store. Call us if you're over 40, you still use the phone. <laughs> it's the least used app on the phone is the phone app. Yeah, right? Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. Are you coming back tomorrow? Yeah, I'll come back tomorrow for AJ's. So we'll, we'll bring you uh, some smoked beef, beef rib. We'll bring you some pastrami. We'll bring you, uh, I'll bring you some good smoked meats. All right. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of What's for Lunch. Let's eat. Oh, my God.